Morning guys, in today's project we're going to be installing these uh, awesome Olin's uh, shocks on the Rebel 1100 and uh, one of the things that we were not sure about because this hasn't been done yet so I'm still trying to figure things out is if this bushing over here is going to fit on the bike. This is the actual OEM bushing. I ended up ordering extras just in case we run into any uh, trouble and by measuring this, this is actually 14 millimeters and so is this. So I am optimistic that it's going to work. If you guys can see right here. But before we do anything, I want to take some measurements before we swap this out. Uh, primarily, I want to take the measurement of the seat height. So let's try to rig something up to keep it standardized and then we'll take some measurements. The bike is currently on the stand to maintain the constant and I laid this piece of wood over here so that we can measure the distance from here to the ground. I put some tape in case I need to remove this so that I can place it back in the same uh, position that it was in. And we will double check the level. And as you can see, it's very, very accurate. And this will help us to be as accurate as possible. I placed the marker over here to keep things as consistent as possible and to make it a little bit easier to read. I'm going to be measuring things in centimeters because I'm not good with inches. Sorry guys. We are at 77.4 centimeters approximately. So we'll take another measurement after we install the new shocks. A couple of notes before we get started. So in order to take the pressure off the shock, what I'm doing is I have these air shims, one on this side, one on the other side, so that it'll prevent the rear from dropping and will relieve this pressure over here so that I can remove it. An additional note, I'm trying to avoid removing my exhaust, so I'm gonna try to come in at an angle over here. So there is a chance that I might strip this. But my advice to you guys before you take on a project like this, as you saw in Life of Birch's uh, video, these are super easy to strip. So before I'm starting the project, I have spares just in case I create some damage. This bolt should have been torqued down to 15 foot-pounds, so let's see if that's true. All right, we have success. This was a six millimeter and this is a five millimeter. This should have been torqued down to 6.6 .6 foot-pounds, so let's see if that's true. Before I get started, I wanted to share a tip with you guys. The bolts on the Rebel 1100 are notorious for stripping, okay? I recently was helping a friend of mine install some risers and you know that uh, infamous uh, bolt that holds the dash in place? Well, that uh, stripped. So I wanted to share with you, this is the actual bolt itself and I stripped it completely. So this product you can get from AutoZone, I'll include a link. This saved the day, not once, actually twice. So look how tight it's still on. I haven't removed it because I wanted to share this with you guys so that you guys can see it. If you ever run into an issue with a strip bolt, give this product a, uh, a chance. This is what they look like. Do you see how they're actually twisted? So once you push it in, you hammer it in and it grips like a mother. Phenomenal product, highly recommended. All right, piece of cake. Make sure you save these, okay? We might need these uh, washers for later. All right, let's remove the shock. I'm gonna start off with the bottom one. Things might be different with yours depending on what type of exhaust that you have, okay? Let's see if this did the job and is uh, holding the rear end. First one out on the bottom, rotate a little bit, just like that, our shock is off and these did amazing as you guys can see. It didn't drop so that when we reinstall the new one, it's going to be a piece of cake. Let's take an accurate measurement over here to find out once and for all what this measurement is. 
There you go, 13.88. These are the sleeves that Olin's uh, sends you, provides you. Let's see if they'll fit. As you can see, they don't, they don't fit. They're too small, okay? So what that tells you is any shock that you'll get with a 14 millimeter bushing will work over here. Now that we have them side by side, you guys can clearly see that the Olin's shock is a little bit shorter than the stock shock. Now, for the shorter riders, this is going to be a huge benefit for you guys, okay? So if you are considering investing in suspension that does not sacrifice uh, performance, actually it's going to be 100 times better than the, the stock shock, this is something you should consider investing in. Yes, I understand that it is expensive, but you can be the judge of what you value most, okay? So let's go ahead and adjust the length. This is a 17 millimeter for the locking nut. And then this is, I'm using a three quarter and we're gonna just break this. And then I'll show you how to adjust it, okay? There we go. So what that did is just loosen this up. This is a threaded adjuster. So you see, you just unscrew it to get the right height. I'm gonna take it all the way out so that you guys can see how much adjustment you guys can make. Okay, here's the adjuster. And you have to keep something in mind. Do you see right there how there is a groove? That's the maximum adjustment that you guys can make, right there. And what the manual states is that the lock nut needs to be right there. That's how much adjustment you guys can make, okay? So where that mark is visible. Right there, that's the maximum amount of adjustment you can make. Now let's see how close we are. And as you guys can see, if it's not 100%, it's probably 98% close. I'm very happy with that. Let's take an accurate measurement of this distance so that we can replicate it on the other shock. There we go, 9.71. Make sure you clean these well and put a little bit of grease on them. Olin's provides you with spacers like these, but in my case, they actually don't fit. See? So I'm gonna have to do the installation without them. So this is how it's going to look. All right, let's install it to see if we got the height right. Start with the bottom one, put it in a little bit. Then the top one, I have about a millimeter, maybe half a millimeter to go. So I'm just gonna stretch it a little bit. There we go, see that? It's basically identical in length to the OEM because I haven't made any adjustments over here. What do you guys think of the look? Doesn't it look awesome? I'm gonna start off with the bottom bolt and this time around, I'm going to put just the tiny little bit of thread lock since it's only 15 foot pounds, just for peace of mind, to be honest with you. And the top one's only six foot pounds. Go very slow, you guys, because these are made of soft metal and they'll strip easily, okay? It's only 15 foot-pounds. There you go. Did you hear the click? This is 6.6 .6 pounds. I currently have my torque wrench set to 5 foot-pounds, and I'm going to leave it right there, okay? I don't want to risk damaging this or stripping. Did you hear that click? 
I'm going to go a little bit past it, right there. Since the spacers that Olin's provided didn't fit, watch this. There's a little bit of play. You see that clicking? So I'm going to contact them to see if they have ones that are a little bit bigger or I'll find something else to make it work. But for the time being, I'm just going to ride with it like this and then make the adjustment. Let's remove the second one. I've already adjusted the length on this side exactly the same as the other side, so let's install it on the bike. Perfect, just like that. Just a little bit of uh, thread lock. Once again, this is 6.6 .6 foot-pounds. I have my torque wrench set to 5. Listen for the click. That's it. I'm going to go a little bit past it since it's 6.6. .6. Right there. And once again, just a tiny little bit of thread lock. And torque it down to 15 foot-pounds. right there. Now we can remove the air shims so that the bike can drop and then we'll take a measurement to see if the height changed at all. I've double checked that it's exactly in the same spot as it was. Let's check its level. Yep. Let's take a measurement. It was 77.4, if I'm not mistaken. And it is exactly the same height. Nothing changed. Brilliant. Good morning, guys. Finally, I get a little break in the weather, so it's not raining right now. So I'm going to head out to test out uh, the new shocks that we installed. Uh, a couple of things before we get started. Let's set our expectations, right? So I'm keeping an open mind. I know that this is going to have to be set. So keep that in mind. This is not uh, like a magic wand that you wave and it's going to be perfect as soon as we go out. This needs to be dialed in, OK? There are three different uh, parameters that we have to control and uh, dial in. So one being the preload, two being the compression dampening over here, and three right here is the rebound dampening. Here's a tip to measure sag if you're alone, okay? So I have my tape over here. I use double-sided tape to stick it right there. That way it's a fixed point. And I use this as a fixed point. It's straight up and down to measure the actual sag. So just like this, you hold it right there. It stays in place. Hope this helps. This is with the springs extended. 32.3. Let's see what the bike's weight. This is the bike's weight. This is with all my weight on it. Now, stock, it comes with 12 clicks from zero. Zero meaning closed all the way. Clockwise, closed all the way, 12 out. So I calibrated both the left and the right. So we're good to go there. Same thing with the compression. Regarding the rebound, this is going to have to be by feel. But what they recommend is 21 millimeters. I added just a little bit of preload because I do feel like the spring is a little bit too soft at the moment. I don't have the bags on. We're going to go out, test it out. Hopefully, with these difficult lighting conditions, I hope that this camera can capture the action as we are moving along. All right, let's head out. I've got four miles on it. I haven't put uh, a lot of speed on it, but 
very first impressions is <laughs> you actually feel right away that there is a difference between the front and the rear um, the dampening is where it is guys the dampening is where it is so in the rear it you don't feel that the bouncing the continuous bouncing because when the stroke goes down and then it comes back up that's it it'll go down and back up and stop right there it won't do this and rest you know so yes over the bumps i do feel a difference uh of course uh you'll be able to see it in the other camera what's going on i'll synchronize it so that uh, we can take a look at it together i'm deliberately trying to find some uh you know uh road imperfections and uh, small bumps uh slower bumps faster bumps to test it out but yes i do feel a, a little bit of a difference for sure oh great this is a good test by the way the railroad oh okay so i think it bottomed out we'll double check on the footage but uh, i'm gonna have to probably add uh, some uh, uh, additional uh, compression dampening maybe preload as well so this is, we're gonna be testing out slow speed bumps right now okay and then once we do that we'll move on to high-speed stuff yeah but uh, I think that uh, and we'll uh, check on uh, the other camera I think it's bottoming out Let's get on the highway to see how they do. Let's see over here. Whoa, okay, that was that was rough, rough. Wow. We're gonna test out the railroad crossing with a different setting. So now we added uh, about uh, 10 or 11 millimeters of preload and uh, this is what it looks like with it unloaded this is with the weight of the bike on it and this is with me on it or the rider at 170 pounds let's see how this one feels if you guys remember last time we went on this it bottomed out let's see what difference this makes felt stiff but I'm not sure if it bottomed out or not as you guys saw in the footage the spring rate that came with the Olin shocks which was the 19 Newton meters was way too soft and that's what was uh, causing it to bottom out so what I ended up doing is I ended up getting a new one and I replaced it so this is the 32 so we jumped up from the 19 to the 32 okay so uh, the reason why this didn't work these were designed for the Sportster which has the shocks more upright since this one is angled it has more compound leverage and that's why you see it that it needs a much stiffer spring so let's go out and uh, test it out but before we go out let me show you a visual if you guys remember when we had the old spring it was compressing all the way down even with additional preload and uh, compression dampening so right now it is at minimum uh, preload so this is just the spring rate uh, the compression is set at 12 and the rebound is set at 12 so we might actually have to adjust the rebound because you'll see when it's compressing it bounces up very fast so we need to slow that down to prevent the feeling of bucking right so we'll test it out when we're riding but that's what I suspect okay we're back in the same spot with the railroad uh, crossing over here and uh, let's do a test with the new spring to see if it feels any different so we were about 20 22 miles an hour oh yeah buddy <laughs> Woo! I, I hope the other camera is capturing everything 
we're coming up on it right here we're doing about 20 miles i think this is it right here <laughs> oh yeah buddy fuck fuck man yeah all right all right we are golden what a difference man all right so let's try the interstate now The bike feels like it's sitting a little bit taller, okay, which gives you this better commanding position, if I can say. So yes, it does feel a lot more stable. It does feel feel a lot more smoother. And uh, yep, absolutely. I think we have a big winner, man. Big winner. Now, just be mindful, okay, because. The bike has limited suspension travel, okay? So it's not going to do great in all the bumps. This is not an adventure bike, guys, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, keep your expectations in check. Don't expect to be riding on a magic carpet or anything like that. But yes, uh, for sure, this is uh, definitely an improvement over the, the stock shocks, for sure. Here's the first one like butter like butter we're coming up on the second one right here again again like butter okay this is a rough one over here i think okay this one this one yeah buddy okay so it didn't bottom out man i didn't feel it bottom out but yes that was rough but hey it's gonna be rough on every other bike too you know but it didn't bottom out and it felt really good let's try a hard pull to a uh, hundred wow look how solid the bike is man nothing no wobble no nothing fuck look how solid Woo! let's do another pull Solid as a rock. Solid. Look at that. Lean into the corner. Solid. Look at it. No wobble, no nothing. Wide open. Wide open, guys. Look at this. Look how solid it is. Look. Woo! We made it to the tight twisty so that we can test out the suspension to see what the handling is like. I'm quite familiar with these roads, so I know the performance of the other suspension. It's a nice tight left. Yep, rock steady, rock steady. Wow. This one is a tight one. I'm back into a left. Oh yeah, buddy. Steady, very steady, man. Very, very steady. Let's talk about the results and uh, summarize this whole experience. Um, Okay, so <laughs> where do I start? All right, guys. First, first of all, let's talk about who this is for and who this is not for, you know? So, man, look at this performance. Look, look you see? So anyway, this is not for your everyday average rider, beginner rider. This is, this is not it, guys, okay? And this is not the magic pill that's going to turn the rebel into a gold wing in terms of comfort this is not it okay uh, i don't know what is i don't think i don't think that there is anything out there that can transform this into a couch um, but this enhancement is definitely 
uh, good for somebody like myself as an example who comes from sport sport bikes right and track riding and appreciates the performance aspect of it uh, such as this for example leaning into the corners taking it you know having fun blah 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 a lot of people will benefit from it but this model that's on my bike right is designed for a Harley Davidson Sportster okay it wasn't designed for a Rebel 1100 so they didn't account for the compound leverage so the angle of the shocks how they sit in the swing arm uh, and mount to the subframe okay so the spring rate that was developed for that shock for the Harley Davidson is different than the, what would be developed for the Rebel 1100 now in the future maybe they will uh, develop something for the Rebel 1100 Olin's I hope you're watching this I hope you're listening a lot of us are waiting for a product such as this and maybe I didn't have to go the expensive route to try to figure all of this out for uh, you know the rebel 1100 by changing the spring rate and all that fun stuff but you know Orleans makes amazing products i told you guys uh in the beginning that uh, i'm a huge fan because i personally have experience with them on the track and absolutely love the performance uh, enhancements and performance that i gained on the track beautiful look at this left and a right so this is where these try look how it see how it went into the corner how it just sunk into the corner solid stability rock hard like on rails you know it's it's awesome like that right you do gain performance with these for sure okay but you know once again this is not a sports bike so don't expect it to be you know hey you know you put these on and all of a sudden you're valentino rossi right that's not how it works guys okay so you will see marginal gains all around but it's not a night and day difference. I don't want to fool you. I don't want you guys to think that, you know, I'm trying to sell you something. I don't get anything out of this. I'm, to the contrary, you guys know I spent a shitload of money to try to make this happen for me, right? So I brought you guys along just to, you know, learn something along with me uh, as I tried to figure this out. But what I can tell you is this. You guys saw the performance on the highway. It made the bike so much more stable. Okay, so if you are looking for stability, if you're looking for performance enhancement in the corners and when you accelerate, you know, it, the bike feels just different. It feels awesome. Okay, yes, it is definitely worth the investment you're going to put into these. Okay, but for your average everyday rider, I, I have to be honest and tell you guys, it's not worth the additional money because you're not going to be riding at that level to actually feel the benefits. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to feel a difference between these and the stock uh, suspension. I'm just being honest, guys. I'm being honest with you, okay? So, however, for the shorter riders, okay? Uh, we're talking about five feet tall, maybe a little bit shorter, let's say between 4'11 and 5'3. If you guys wished that the bike was lower by an inch or so this is an answer that or this is an option you should consider this might not be the answer for you but it's an option that you guys can consider okay because these have an adjustment right so maybe a half an inch or maybe an inch i'm not entirely sure i didn't measure it but you guys saw an in installation how i demonstrated you know how much you can add to it so if you want the exact seat height as the OEM, this is what I did with mine. I wanted exact seat height. I didn't want to push the bike up, okay? So for the shorter rider, the 12 inch will benefit you. You will love it, okay? In terms of dropping the bike, but maintaining performance and all of that stuff. Now, when you drop the rear, you have to take into account that you're gonna have to drop the, the, the forks, the suspension in the front, okay? So you're gonna raise the forks through the tubes okay just a little bit a couple of millimeters to get that okay look at these beautiful corners sorry <laughs> it's okay to be distracted by this right Woo! yeah buddy <laughs> anyway so concentrate gus right okay <laughs> 
for the taller rider they do make a 13 inch version of this okay so the 13 inch version is similar to the burley brand okay now burley brand is made by progressive and that shock has no adjustment whatsoever in terms of the dampening and it's all in the dampening guys okay so being able to adjust the dampening that's what sets any suspension apart from the other one a spring is a spring right and having a fixed rate spring versus a progressive spring it also makes a difference okay so in my opinion Olin's is a night and day difference between other suspension okay because it gives you the ability to fine-tune it to dial it into exactly how you like it with a, for different varying conditions varying temperatures varying roads varying uh, load on the bike so if you have a passenger if you have luggage if you're solo you can fine-tune all of this with the dampening rebound compression as well as a little bit with the preload right so uh, the possibilities are endless with these yes they are to me well worth the investment that I made initially and you guys probably could tell by the tone in my voice with the old spring I was a little bit disappointed I was a little bit anxious about uh, having spent that much money but now with the new spring uh, you guys can tell that I'm super excited on the highway they did uh, exceptionally well for me okay guys just you know take it with a grain of salt for me I'm my background is not you know coming from cruisers and, and and riding a couch and all of that i'm used to a stiff suspension i prefer a stiff suspension because i would sacrifice a little bit of comfort for performance because to me performance equals safety margin or a, a, an increased safety margin that's how i look at it all right anyway guys i uh, i'm i'm hopeful that uh, this has been helpful to some of you guys that have been thinking about upgrading the suspension i cannot tell you if you should spend your money or not on on this you make the decision i tried to make the case i tried to show you and not be biased about this um yes in the beginning i was a little disappointed i'm not gonna lie and now i am much happier than i was and it's only gonna get better okay because once i add my saddlebags on it's gonna help uh because the spring rate is so stiff okay so they do make two spring rate two additional spring rates I, I should say one is a 30 newton meter and the other one is a 32 i decided to go with the 32 which is the stiffest of them all based on what i was feeling with the 19 and how easily i was able to collapse it with my hands and i'll, I'll put a little bit of a video so you guys can see it with my hands uh you know with all that preload added i was still able to compress it so i hope that you guys found this uh, helpful ask me anything i'm sure that i missed some some things in uh, in uh, the summary now and uh, if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and uh, i'll be happy to have this conversation i really enjoy our conversations actually in the in the comment section so have an amazing day guys